the entertainers, both male and female. Uh, one of the one of the columnists here in Chicago made a point about that. I know, but I think it, uh, it's interesting. They made the point about the about the girl extras and not the guys. Uh, Everybody can't talk at once, so it'd be kind of hard to get through the hour. Why do you want to be a bunny? Because it sounds like a very interesting and exciting life. It's, you know, not the same as the everyday routine of going to work at 9 and coming home at 5. It seems really interesting. What do you know about being a bunny? Well, I know that it's hard work because I've been to the club and it seems like hard work. And I heard they get modeling jobs and meet a lot of celebrities and it's different. <laughs> want to meet celebrities? Yes. What do meeting celebrities mean to you? Well, it means that it's, it's a different life than everybody else, and it's more exciting, and you can say that you've done things when the time comes for you to settle down. <laughs> what do you do now? Um, I work for Eastern Airlines as a reservationist. So. Consider it pretty dull? Um, no, not too dull, because I get to travel. But it would be more exciting to be a bunny than that. <laughs> What would you do if uh, one of the men in the club got a little out of hand? There's a lot of convention here. Do so you think you can handle the, uh, the difficult male? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I've never been in that predicament, so I really don't know. <laughs> I guess I'd have to wait until the time comes. All right. Mary? Oh. Roseanne, why do you want to be a bunny? They seem like they enjoy themselves so much and they get so much out of life. I think it's something different, you know? What do you want to get out of life? Happiness, really. I know, and just to enjoy it. Do you think happiness is being a uh, playboy bunny? Maybe to some girls, yeah, if that's what it's supposed to be. For them, yeah. Tell me again, and tell me a little longer and go into it. Why do you want to be a bunny? <laughs> well, if I had the opportunity to be a bunny, um, I, it's really hard to say now, but I think if um, if I had the chance to be one, um, I like to, well, I like to you know go out to meet people. I enjoy people, 
And I think this way they give you a lot of content with different like celebrities and people like that. And it's just something that I would enjoy doing. What do you know about being a bunny? Not too much. This is really my first, um, you know, I saw the ad and so I figured, well, what do I have to lose? <laughs> Some weight. <laughs> Somewhat. Wait. <laughs> Do you think you measure up? Uh... No, I'm overmeasured, I think. <laughs> but maybe in a few years, who knows what'll happen. <laughs> How do you feel with all these pretty girls around you? Like a little ant <laughs> in the corner someplace. They're really nice looking though. Really pretty. To be my father couldn't come. <laughs> Did you come because you're hoping perhaps one day you'll lose some weight and become a bunny or for what? I think mostly out of curiosity, but I mean I have hopes for who knows. <laughs> so I figured why well, I might as well come. <laughs> so. Okay. Terry, why do you want to be a bunny? Well, I'd like to do something exciting and be with people and do something that makes a lot of money. And I think I've heard a lot about it. I think it would be a good job. I think it would be fun being with people. I couldn't stand to be a secretary and sit down and do nothing and just, you know, sit and write things. I'd like to be with people and talk to people and do things. What do you do now? I'm a waitress, cocktail waitress. And I like that type of work. I think I could make more money as a bunny and meet more people, do more exciting things. Do you think it's a lead, perhaps, to, uh, to matrimony, meeting somebody you'd like to marry? Perhaps. A lot of men. I'd probably meet a lot of men. I'd like that. But it would, I would really be interested in it. I think it'd be a good job. What do you hear from the girls who are bunnies? What do they say? I've heard that it's very exciting and a lot of fun and a lot of money. And I hear they live right here, and it's very cheap. They have maid service, and they have a lot of exciting experiences and really like their jobs. You feel that you're just not living now, that things are like dull? I'm, I'm missing out on a lot of things, and there is much more in life than just being a waitress in a restaurant. And I could meet a lot of interesting people and really do a lot more things. What do you want to do with your life? I don't really know yet. I, that's what I'm looking for right now. And I just want to try something and see what it is, what I want to do. How do your folks feel about your attitude? Well, my mother feels that I should do what I want to do. She, you know, has, feels she's brought me up right enough that I should have a mature attitude and do what I want and, you know, feel the way I want to feel. So she trusts me in what I want to do. What if you don't make it? If I don't make it, I'll try something else. And I'll just, until I find what I really want to do. Gail, why, uh, why are you here today? I came here to see the mansion. Playboy Mansion. I was curious to see what it looked like. Why do you want to be a bunny? I don't really. <laughs> Not really. I just more or less came. I'd like to see what the place looked like. And Well, I didn't come actually to, uh, you know, I didn't have it in mind to be a bunny. Maybe I'd change my mind. I'm not sure. You just came sightseeing. Right, more or less. Well, how does the place measure up here to what you uh, what you thought it would be? It's more than I expected, really. It's very beautiful. Don't you have anything better to do with your time on a Saturday afternoon? No, Saturday afternoons are very dull, really. Go shopping, but I figured it would be something different, really. So you really don't want to be a bunny? Not really. Why not? Well, <laughs> it's a good question. Um, I like the job I'm working now. We're in trouble. Okay, Charlie. Why do you want to be a bunny? I don't want to be. Really. Why are you here? to see what the place looked like. Why don't you want to be a bunny? Well, more or less the girls are a lot different from me. 
I mean, and look wise on that order. Irene, can't you speak up? I don't, I don't understand why you can't talk. You know, uh, just tell me why you don't want to be a bunny. You said before the measurements, the whole thing. Let me ask it again. All right, just tell me. Why don't you want to be a bunny? Well, their measurements are quite different from mine, and I think it's quite a different life than from the life I lead. What kind of life do you lead? Well, very simple, really. So why are you here? I wanted to see what the mansion looked like. Uh, baby. Why don't you want to be a bunny? Because I don't think that I have the measurements like the regular Playboy bunnies do. And I don't think that I could live the life like they do. What kind of life do you think they lead? A fast life. Something really different. And why did you come today? Because I wanted to see what the mansion looked like. Just curiosity. Yes. What do you think of all this now that you've seen it? It's fantastic. I'm sorry. Okay. How about an establisher first? Can you just have me talking to her like this first? Okay. Uh huh. Um. Okay. Well, what do you think of the turnout? I'm very pleased. We have some very lovely girls here today, I think. They're all very young and fresh, the kind we look for. The basic material is here, anyway. What do you mean the basic material is here? Well, when we train a bunny, we train her not only in, in uh, the stylized service of uh, the Playboy Clubs, but we train her in makeup techniques and, and hair styling. And uh, while some of the girls here are pretty enough to be bunnies, uh, they will require some of these lessons to be, you know, a final product bunny. But can you change your face? You can change the contour of a face with makeup. But the, the girls have to have good features and be basically pretty. Well, let's, let's try it again now. Let's, let's try that again. You're, you're hedging me, Nancy. Uh, you know, unless you want me to be tougher. <laughs> All right, let's let's try it again. You no, know, you say they've got the basic material. They, I mean, yeah, they're awesome for average girls, right? Now, oh, you want me to say that? Nancy, what do you think of the turnout? Uh, do you think enough of the girls are pretty enough? How do you improve on a face, a basic face? Through makeup techniques, we teach the girls how to apply their makeup in the most flattering way and, and what is the most flattering hairstyle for her. And uh, through costuming, of course, the bunny costume. Do you think it would be better if men selected the bunnies instead of women? No. <laughs> this is a question that, that we've been asked many times, and we've debated ourselves. And no, we don't think men are the best judges because men tend to choose all one type of girl, and we like to have a variety of, of types of beauty because we have a lot of them coming into the club, and they don't all like the same kind of girl. So you're saying most of the girls that have come so far, and quite a, men, quite a few, uh, are basically pretty? I would say so, yes. Yeah. And, uh, of course, when we choose, our, when we make our final selections for bunnies from this group, we hope we will have chosen the prettiest. But you think this is a representative group of what uh, might be in Playboy clubs? Uh, those who end up to be bunnies, yes, are probably representative of what this is what this is representative of what we generally get at a bunny hunt. We choose about one out of every hundred. It's like a giant beauty contest. What can you really do for a girl? What can you do for her? You mean in the way of uh, enhancing her uh, natural beauty? Well, as I said before. What about uh, physical attributes? A girl has to have a figure in proportion to her height, and uh, the bunny costume is very flattering to a good figure. Makes the best of it. Okay. 
but who knows? Cosmetics and fittings can do wonders these days for a girl. And some of the Playboy hopefuls who came here today may end up looking like some of these. Howard Tuckner, ABC News, Chicago. Want to do it once? But who knows? Cosmetics and fittings can do wonders these days. And some of the Playboy girls who came here today, let's start over. You happy with that? Many of the things that are outside is control, recession, increased competition, things of that sort that we've had to face. But I think that he does feel that had, had he played, or had he played, or had I played, or both of us played a b bigger role in the, uh, in the scene in Chicago, that uh, we would not have made some of the errors that we have made, and that we would have made some good moves that haven't been made. Mr. Lowndes, are you contemplating any new magazines, the for uh, formation of one? Well, we've been looking at magazines, but uh, I personally don't feel that uh, it's a very good time at this moment for us to... A new magazine is a big investment and a risky business. And uh, we've been doing some uh, research into possible area magazines to bring out, but I don't think that Playboy will uh, bring out any magazine in the next 18 months, any new magazine. I wouldn't uh, see that on the cards, but we have some research, ongoing research into this area. When uh, Playboy started, it was the, uh, the only and the raciest game in town. Now, th that is no longer true. How has that changed the enterprise, anyway? Well, I think people have kind of a short memory. We weren't the raciest game in town, ever. There were always uh, magazines, uh, films, and uh, and uh, material of an erotic content that uh, we were the most we were the most acceptable. But that more or less indicated that uh, that we presented a concept of quality and a an acceptable image, whereas the others were just sort of quote out of the question. Uh, although half is continually on top of the situation here, I think that the that there has been a uh, a uh, an absent factor in the home office that uh, his increased visits to uh, Chicago and my own uh, presence here uh, will go a long way to offsetting. Thank you. Right, Mr. Lyles, what is happening to Playboy Enterprises? Yes, well. Uh, I would say that we're in a state of reorganization at the present time. Okay. Mr. Lyons, what is happening to Playboy Enterprises? Well, right now I would say that we're in a state of reorganization. What we're trying to accomplish here is... Okay. There are those that feel that the Playboy magazine is obviously chauvinistic and uh, the sexual revolution has passed it by. Do you share this view? No. Mr. Lowndes, who runs this company? Half runs the company. There was a time when uh, Playboy Enterprises, 
Playboy magazine, Playboy Clubs, was the only game in town and the raciest one. Uh, that is no longer true. What effect has this had on Playboy? Well, there's a much larger market at the present time, but fortunately, is that right? who pines away when I'm yeah. in America, uh, and a whole bunch of horses. Over here, this over here is the part that's difficult for me because I really and uh, all like that there. Mm -hmm. okay. Mr. Lyons, what is happening to the Playboy Enterprises? Well, uh, we like to think that we're uh, going from our slightly... What basically is happening to Playboy Enterprises? Well, most American companies don't say they're in trouble until they've had several losing years. We have not even had our first losing year and don't intend to have one. I think uh, it shows a lot of Heft's uh, good sense to create a kind of a crisis atmosphere at Playboy uh, before, uh, while we're making money. And uh, I think that uh, there are a lot of problems over here. I, the company had a tendency to get sort of, uh, sort of a uh, little spread around the middle. We're 21 years, 22 years old now, and, and uh, we haven't been growing fast enough uh, in the new enterprises and to uh, an expansion of our existing uh, areas in order to uh, to account for the tremendous overhead that we've managed to build up. We've built up a pretty big bureaucracy. So I think that what needs to be done is two things. Trim off the fat and get busy expanding in new directions which will bring in uh, uh, a lot more revenue and I think it's preeminently possible. This diversification you talk about now, is this a movement away from the magazine there? Are those that feel that the magazine is uh, obviously chauvinistic and uh, the sexual revolution has actually passed it by? Do you share that uh, point of view? No, I don't think uh, that the magazine's passe, but a magazine is this month's magazine. Uh, well, it's certainly, if we look back at our early issues, the magazine is definitely passe, but I think the magazine has to, to keep abreast of the times, even a little ahead of the times. Uh, we may have been remiss in that area too, and I think there's been uh, quite a shakeup in the editorial viewpoint and in, uh, in staying a, uh, a l along with the community, as it were. Now, in terms of other activities, I think that uh, we have plenty of room for expansion. I think we've done it badly in the past. One of the things that we did badly was we always tried to do it ourselves, and that meant hiring people to do the job rather than going into partnership, as it were, on a lot of ventures. I prefer, for example, I'm going into the concert business in England for Playboy. And rather than hire somebody to put on concerts, uh, somebody a fan of pop music or somebody who's slightly knowledgeable, maybe somebody who busted out on his own, I'm going into business with a guy who's the best and biggest concert promoter in, in England. Uh, and that's the way we should be operating. In other words, give them a little piece of the Playboy pie and make the pie that much bigger. And that's the entire approach that I'm taking to all the new ventures. The new business group is one of the things that I have in what we call Playboy leisure activities, which includes clubs, hotels, and so on. There has been some confusion here lately over the sale of the Playboy Mansion yes. in Chicago, which has, uh, seems to have been the, the almost the heart of the philosophy here, the Playboy philosophy over the years, and something that Mr. Hefner has moved out of over in, in the last few years. But what is this confusion between, I gather, between Mr. Hefner and yourself over the sale of the mansion? Well, perhaps I've been in England too long and uh, become somewhat anglicized, but when someone says that they're going to cut the mansion to me, it meant in my terms, that they were cutting the mansion out. What it really meant was that they were cutting back on uh, the expenses of the mansion and the airplane for that matter, and that there were no immediate plans to make any such drastic move as to cut them out of our operations. I had a little bit of egg on my face. You can see it. Some of it's still stuck on there, but uh, at any rate, one, as one wet observed, they would hate to see Hef's center fold. <laughs> when the idea of closing the mansion. And uh, so I guess it has a happy ending, the story. Uh, listen, I make a lot of mistakes. If I told Hef when I agreed to, uh, to participate in, on, in activities on this side of the Atlantic, as well as continuing to run England, that uh, 
that if I batted six or seven hundred, I would regard that as pretty great. If only thirty percent of my uh, decisions or even pronouncements turned out to be uh, in error. I, I do feel badly because I think it, it reflects on my own credibility, whereas what I was really thought I was being was candid, but what I would encourage us all to be a little sharper on how we communicate. Who is running this company now, Mr. Lyons? Mr. Hefner runs the company. And what is your function underneath his leadership? Uh, my function is to provide uh, some of his, we communicate very well, Hef and I. We have a almost almost psychic. As a matter of fact, uh, in this particular gap in communications, Hef commented himself that perhaps he depended too much on my remarkable insights to capture the meaning of what he had in mind uh, without stressing it. Uh, but we have almost a psychic ability to understand what's on each other's minds in, in these areas. And, and uh, I, my function here is to uh, is to provide some of uh, on the scene in Chicago and of course in England as I felt, feel I've been doing for I've been over there for 12 years uh, some of his brand leadership in the operation uh, his, some of his uh, insights and uh, either directly garnished from him or uh, or knowing what he would do does he feel, and I don't know whether he's been quoted on this or not, that what has happened to the organization is somewhat an indictment of him? The loss in circulation, the uh, decrease in revenue, the, yes, the collapse much so. in the, uh, in the uh, uh, market value of the stock? Well, maybe I'm not as psychic as I think I am, but uh, yes, I would say that he does feel that he is greatly responsible for... Uh, is an idea whose time has passed. Mm. You don't feel that? Well, we do an enormous business. We're doing something like uh, two hundred million dollars in business a year, and uh, there, are m there. That means there to me that there are customers out there for what we are selling, which is what it's all about. I mean, we're in the game of selling stuff, uh, magazines, movies, uh, whatever, and uh, as long as we can stay fresh and. Uh, even listen to our younger middle management who have tremendous ideas that have gone ignored and or unheard would be more like it. I think that we will be in, uh, we can get ourselves very much back on track. It would be like you saying to Henry Ford that the Model T has come and gone. And uh, that Why should I buy it. Playboy magazine if I buy it and I assume that most men buy it for the pictures and not the literature? Oh, you're wrong. Why should, why should I buy your magazine if I can see the same thing in movies? Well, Which for was one not thing, true 22 years ago when the, when the magazine came out. Well, there, there are different people. I mean, all through this period, there have been people who have been uh, hunched over a hot television set or uh, eight for six or seven hours every evening and have never opened any magazine. Uh, the moviegoer is not necessarily the same guy as the... Uh, as the uh, Playboy reader. I myself, uh, a Playboy reader, uh, for example, have never seen a hardcore porno film, in, at least in a cinema. I mean, I've seen them, but I've never seen one in a, in a cinema. And I wouldn't go out of my way to see. I wouldn't pay money, you see. And uh, so nudity on, in films today, I don't think that's really a competitive item as far as uh, we're concerned. This is a different medium, and uh, and I don't see that that's a big problem for us. What about the other troubles that have uh, beset the uh, Playboy empire, such as uh, charges of discrimination in hiring and publicity practices for some of your employees? How, how do you address yourself to that? I do address myself to that. I'm very seriously concerned about these charges, and waking sort of Rip Van Winkle-like and returning to uh, Sleepy Hollow some 12 years after I left to go to England, I'm astonished to see that we haven't done the kind of job that I felt that I had begun to do myself personally when I was here uh, those many years ago, that the changes haven't taken place in the community uh, that, uh, that I would have anticipated would have just by the passage of time. For example, when I left, we had a promotion art director who was a black man. And to come back 12 years later and find that there isn't anybody in the organization beyond that level who's black shows, if nothing else, 
uh, not the kind of aggressive campaign that I feel that the company should be putting on in terms of of a sort of a re reverse prejudice in uh, in the selection process. Somewhere along the line, Hefner's message, and I know it's his message, uh, has gotten lost uh, here in the. Didn't really digest it well. Yes, that's absolutely true. Just it how went from a little company to a very big one in a short time. Just how bad is the financial picture these days? In terms of Playboy? Yeah. Not bad the whole at all. Emperor. Not bad at all. Uh, we will, we will um, throw off a profit of about uh, $5 million in the fiscal year that just ended. But this is the first year in 22 years that you're actually taking a loss, isn't it? The We're profits have been gone down. Uh, well, uh, the middle two quarters of this fiscal year that's just now ending. But the last quarter was... Uh, uh, a very nice uh, return to a profit picture, and the overall year will show a profit of, of around five million before taxes. Can you blame the declining profits, if you would, uh -huh. on just the recession? Isn't there more to it than just the recession? The recession, without question, is the primary cause, but we are also in a more competitive circulation situation with the magazine than we've been before. But, with, but also the market itself is has increased dramatically in the last several years. So that really is not the key consideration. The key consideration is the combination inflation recession that has affected uh, you know, the economy in general. What is it's just that we get the publicity. In other words, we're going through the same thing, that, uh, but faring, uh, faring a little better, quite frankly, because we continue to, to uh, show a good profit, um, than a great many other companies, but, but, but Playboy naturally gets the publicity because Playboy is, is more interesting. What is Playboy doing that it shouldn't be doing, that it needs to do so that it can recover? Well, I think the primary thing that we have been doing uh, that we shouldn't have been doing was uh, uh, because of the, of the rather remarkable growth of the company in the 60s, I don't think that we uh, were operating as efficiently as we could. I think that we'd gotten um, you know, a little inefficient in some areas. What we're really involved in now, and what we've been involved in since early in the year, is a re-examination of the company, um, of its aims, of its goals, um, trying to develop a little more uh, sophisticated market strategy, deciding indeed what, uh, what businesses that we're in make the most sense, uh, examining whether there are some that we're in that, that may not in the future make sense, and then whatever direction we're going, trying to do them in, a, in a, a, both a better and a more efficient way. Playboy magazine itself has not done well recently. It's dropped off pretty dramatically by all the standards that we use to judge magazine circulation by. Is that because Playboy is not sexy enough anymore? It's not kinky enough, such as some of the other publications that apparently are gobbling up that audience? Playboy magazine at the present time in its, in its uh, U.S. edition is selling uh, just over 5,800,000 copies a month. The largest circulation of any men's magazine in the history of the world. Uh, and throwing off a gigantic profit. Hit a peak of, of just under seven million, uh, you know, a couple of years ago. Why is that? Why isn't the magazine doing as well as it did, besides the competition, or is it just competition? Well, it is, yes, it is uh, the fact that it, it is very much, I think, the fact that there are more alternatives out there in the marketplace today. One of those alternatives is, is uh, one of our own publications started about two and a half years ago called We, which has an additional circulation of about a million, uh, uh, 250,000. In addition to that, in the last three years, uh, we have initiated four separate foreign language editions of Playboy, which are not included in its primary circulation. We have a, a foreign language uh, issue of Playboy in Germany, in Italy, in France, and as of a month ago in Japan. Is Playboy going to have to change? Well, the point of that is that that circulation is another million. Our, our all-time circulation in terms of the marketplace is higher than, ever, than it's ever been before. It's something over eight million now. But it is a decline. Eight it is. million isn't a decline, it's just that we're packaging. It's rather as though Procter & Gamble were putting out um, uh, its soap flakes in one particular kind of package and then for marketing reasons also decided to, you know, offer an alternate kind of uh, packaging. So, in other words, the point is that, that our part of the market is higher now than it ever was before. What about Mr. Lowndes now? You've given him a lot of authority to trim budgets, to cut back where necessary. Is there any resentment on your part? How do you feel about him taking over some of the some of the reins? Very, very happy. He's there doing um, the things that he's been asked to do. He's a very good and creative man. He's a fellow that's been with me almost from the beginning. 
he's done a, a uh, spectacular job of running our uh, clubs and, and casinos in England. And uh, they are enjoying, as a matter of fact, uh, an all-time high this year in the fiscal year that just ended. You say, you say and, you're, you're happy with him, and yet... And we're going to, we, you know, we hope and expect... I, 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 I brought him back specifically because I hope he's going to bring some of the same uh, flair and, uh, and savvy to the rest of our club operation. But both of you just publicly disagreed over whether to get rid of the Chicago mansion or not. Well, obviously those decisions are made here, and I think it was a misunderstanding... Uh, uh, you know, I don't want to say a misquote, but a misunderstanding on uh, that that received wide uh, publicity. Uh, uh, no hard that caused feelings. That problem. No hard. No feelings. hard feelings between Vic and myself. Quite the contrary. I wish I had about 30 more guys like him. In summary, what's Playboy going to have to do to to increase its position in the market to make a better go of it, especially when it comes to the magazine, since that is where most of the profits come from. Well, we're involved right now in an exploration, not just on the economic level, but also on the creative level of, of uh, almost all of our activities, and are in the months immediately ahead going to be reevaluating a number of the things we're doing. And as I say, not just on a business level, but also in terms of of uh, the kind of products we're putting out, uh, the kind of services supplied at the clubs. And uh, you will see some restyling in terms of the magazines. And you'll also see some, uh, what we think are going to be very exciting innovations that are going to be introduced into the club operation. Uh, w see, I think that we, uh, you know, we suffered to some extent in the, uh, as a result of the success of the 60s by just kind of losing track of the, you know, the basic services and products that were really so you're uh, attending to or should be attending to and I think they're going to be putting some of that sizzle and excitement back into uh, Playboy which I find you know a very exciting adventure in terms of the immediate future you're bullish very bullish at this point yes okay um, get your Do you 
started you uh, in the process of HMH Enterprises? What made me, uh, I, what made me start? Yes, what got you on the road to it? Well, uh, I'm a magazine guy first and foremost, and I was interested in, um, in putting out a magazine that I could enjoy and enjoy editing. Uh, and of course, when it began, um, I had no notion at all of, um, that it would come to this. I had no idea. Yes. The Bunny Code? I think one of the girls might have to do that. Um, I don't even know what it is. <laughs> they don't either. But <laughs> yes. Uh, 70. I guess there are what? There must be about 600, 500, 600 in all. Seven? 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 Bunny Code? Favorite? Well, it's closer. Um, it's hard to say. Uh, a lot of the different clubs have advantages. I don't know how many of you have seen the Lake Geneva Resort, but it's something else uh, up uh, in Wisconsin. And uh, the one in London has gambling, which is very nice. Uh, uh, the different clubs have different virtues. Yes? I'd like to know your opinion of the demonstration. Someone from the promotion department out there giving a a talk, and in the middle of it, uh, ten students, uh, four guys, and uh, and six girls uh, undressed uh, all the way, I guess. And it was a uh, part of a of a new campaign um, related to uh, women's rights. 
And the notion, I guess, that women and men are basically the same, though that seems like a very odd way to prove it. <laughs> if they're going to hold any more demonstrations like that, I think they should hold them here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, we're through with the series for the season, so. Yes, girl. Yes. Uh, they're asking about a demonstration at Grinnell College last week. Uh, apparently we had a, um, someone from promotion department out there giving a, a talk, and in the middle of it, uh, ten students, uh, four guys and, uh, and six girls uh, undressed, uh, all the way, I guess. And it was uh, a part of a, of a new campaign uh, related to uh, women's rights. And the notion, I guess, that women and men are basically the same, though that seems like a very odd way to prove it. <laughs> If they're going to hold any more demonstrations like that, I think they should hold them here. Yes? How does one get on Playboy after dark? Well, we're through with the series for the season, so uh, it would be impossible now. We just finished the last of the first 26, and we'll be doing some more about another 26 uh, or in another, about another uh, half year. Yes? Are you in the business to let us apply? To let you apply for? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's why we invited you here. <laughs> yes, girls are like that. Why do they what? No, it's no more true of the girls than the guys. As a matter of fact, uh, some of the girl extras get more lines than guys. It's just a matter of uh, setting up a party format and um, and obviously most of the conversation is with the entertainers, both male and female. Uh, one, of the, one of the columnists here in Chicago made a point about that, I know. But I think it, um, it's interesting they made the point about the, about the girl extras and not the guys. Uh, you know, everybody can't talk at once or it would be kind of hard to get through the hour. Hollywood tonight immediately after the program, but anybody who's really interested can give me a call later. I'll be back. <laughs> well, now you really got to be guessing. Yes, we'll try to arrange that. Okay, I'm going to turn you back to, um, to uh, Mr. Gottlieb. Thank you. It was a press agent's dream, billed as the biggest bunny hunt this side of Australia. But it didn't work out exactly the way they expected. into a kind of a personal confrontation kind of thing, and, uh, and the real concerns of the employees got lost. Unfortunately, at this okay, point, a certain number of our employees are not yet aware of that. No, I, I, uh, on Thursday, I only had uh, the beginnings of an investigation. What I did, you know, I think there is some implication, you're not saying that, but I think there's some implication that what happened is, because Jackson, uh, in, a, in a statement uh, last night, uh, 
said that I've been sold a bill of goods by, you know, some of my managers. Well, if so, we'll soon find out. But that's not the case. Uh, in other words, I'm committed to the goals, and the and the goals are. Um, you see, there is no disagreement in terms of where the company's got to go. Now we're going to get there. We'll all know Australia. if but that's happening or not, and it's going to happen. Exactly the way they expect. Also, this is only the first step in terms of making that happen. I indicated very clearly to the to the group that supposedly represented those employees who were most concerned about the problem, and of necessity in less detail to uh, the employees yesterday, that I was not only deeply personally committed to this thing, but that the affirmative action program that we had already established, I was not satisfied was going to be able to do the job and that we were going to re -ex be re-examining the entire program and those in a position to uh, implement it and take whatever steps were necessary uh, you know, to see that we really get where we ought to be. Now take a more active role in seeing that these things are, are actually carried out. Yeah, yeah. personal commitment obviously means that. I mean, quite obviously, I'm not going to be doing it myself day by day, but it's going to happen. It's going to happen very quickly. Uh, well, I, I expect to be doing that uh, for other reasons. Uh, yes. Uh -huh. I hope occasionally just to hang out. It seems like every time I'm here, there's some kind of a problem going on. Yeah. With the manage with the uh, day by day management of the company here. What kind of that? Well, the one that you're aware of. In other words, all I'm saying is that I think that they. Yes. On behalf of, uh, if I understand your question correctly, I think that we got. I think, and that's what I was referring to earlier when I said that it's very difficult to, you know, probe a, and and you know, beyond a certain point, dangerous to probe a person's motivations. But there is, the turning point for me in this matter, quite frankly, came at the point in which I became satisfied that there was enough evidence that, you see, we had had to deal with prior to that, a number of actions which were hurtful to Playboy, but that I could justify on the basis of a legitimate concern for some problems in the company. And in other words, I had to view that part of the problem in a context of my own dissatisfaction with, you know, the past in terms of our, of our uh, program related to equal opportunity. It was when I reached the point in which, uh, you know, we ran into a number of specific instances in which uh, the motivations would seem to have been something very different than that, that I really felt that, uh, uh, you know, we had to move in this particular direction. Or to put it another way, I don't think we could get the company where it ought to go in terms of race or anything else um, with Jackson still with us. Mr. Hefner, is, uh, is the real reason Playboy is going to adopt a new image is because of internal differences or internal conflict, or is it because of the change in public attitude based upon uh, many of the controversial in the paper plate? I'm not sure what you mean. Are you referring now to the racial thing? I'm referring to the racial thing. I'm referring to the drug Thing. I'm referring to uh, the fact that the economy, uh, that you stated the economy had something to do with some alleged moves that are now not going to take place. I don't know exactly how to respond to that because it covers so many things. Um, I, I, we are obviously responding to, uh, you know, responding to a changing society. In the race area, uh, my reaction, quite frankly, is, uh, you know, a kind of a a sadness and uh, recognition of the irony because, you know, I'm not going to, I don't know if it's necessary to go start going through chapter and verse in terms of, uh, of what Playboy is, uh, has been doing in these areas. I think you know where I stand. Do you consider the race area the most uh, important area right now? No, just the sadness. No. I, well, it, you know, uh, anything that involves people that you have some commitment to, and you certainly have uh, to, uh, you know, the people that are working for you, becomes becomes an overriding issue, yeah. But in addition to the race thing? In addition to the race thing, uh, uh, turning the business around. Uh, if you, uh, in other words, uh, are you asking, uh, you know, how am I going to handle the potential conflict between dealing with the employee problems and the problem of... Uh, no, I'm asking huh? in terms of everything that's taken place in terms of the last year with uh, Bobby Arnstein case and with the, uh, no, with the, the racial issue and with the profits... Discussing here. Uh, my more active participation in uh, Playboy as a company 
uh, you know, goes back to uh, the beginning of this year and, you know, was business oriented and it was uh, related to the, um, the business recession and, and uh, its, its effect upon Playboy. In a similar way, uh, I'm now involving myself in dealing with what I consider to be a very serious uh, uh, legitimate problem in terms of uh, our beefs, what our employees' beefs. I'm sorry. What needs to be done on the business end? Well, we're in the process of doing it, uh, reorganizing the company. Uh, being sh uh, we're, we are involved and have been s since the early part of, uh, of this year. A, uh, a major internal reorganization, uh, a br a breaking the company up uh, on a table of organization basis differently than, in the, than it has been in the past into a series of divisions, which are kind of like mini companies. Um, you know, trying to get the uh, uh, individual responsibility and accountability much more down to uh, uh, key individuals. And, um, and we're also on the creative side, very much uh, uh, re-involved in re-examining the product and services that we're supplying. Uh, Playboy is, I've had a series of editorial meetings, Playboy is going to uh, be coming up with some, you know, very exciting new uh, editorial uh, concepts that I can't talk about at this point. Obviously, I'm sure you're aware of the fact we've been involved in a, in a dramatic um, reorganization in the club area since uh, Vic, who we brought back from London to attend to that kind of thing, is, uh, does have a way of getting into the papers with some regularity. And uh, I understand has gotten the nickname Jaws here amongst some quarters. To what extent are you committed to keeping the Playboy Empire in Chicago, the center of the Playboy Empire in Chicago, as evidenced by the fact that you've now spent most of your time in Los Angeles? You know, in the public mind, you are a center of the Playboy Empire. Well, committed, I don't think, uh, would be exactly the word, but there are no plans for moving it. Uh, you know, I grew up in Chicago, and uh, uh, and it has many virtues. As you know, it's, it uh, is geographically and in, other, in, in many other ways, uh, you know, kind of uh, psychologically, emotionally, kind of the the center of the of the country and, re and more, certainly much more reflective of America than either New York or uh, Los Angeles where most of the rest of the communications come from. So there are no plans, uh, you know, for moving it. As a matter of fact, one of the things I was concerned about related to uh, the man initial mansion story was that it would be misunderstood as, uh, as that. We're in a very strong position, the strongest of any, uh, stronger than anybody else has ever been. Uh, we, at the same time, think that there are some things we have to do to make it better, and that's what we're involved in. What's that? We had a number of um, uh, publications that very uh, new publications. I don't think we'll ever be the only one again. Um, I came up with a very good idea, and uh, a lot of guys have copied it. Uh, fortunately, uh, you know, uh, uh, not as well. And when you're the first one and you do the best job, you usually, you know, win out. But I think that's all we can expect. The whole history of magazine publishing uh, uh, it reflects the same thing. There have almost always been strong second or third uh, titles in any given magazine field. So I think it's, you know, it's part of the way. Well, we hope we are going to make it better and more interesting. Well, I told you a little while ago that uh, I told you a little while ago that we did have some, uh, you know, uh, a number of new editorial projects that are going to be going into the book, and I, that I couldn't talk about them at this time. I mean, what does this mean? Though? What kind of pictures? Couples? Oh, in other words, is the magazine going to be some, uh, more sexually explicit? Yes. There was hardcore pornography back in 1953 too. It just uh, wasn't out there on the newsstand. <laughs>